Welcome to the Friendship Baptist Church in the Colony. I'm Senior Pastor Gregory C. Trotter, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our live streaming program here at Friendship Baptist Church. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you into our worship service. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and that you will receive that blessing that God has in store for you. So sit back and enjoy the worship service. We welcome you to the Friendship Baptist Church in the Colony. Let the people of God say amen. amen. It is indeed another day's journey, and we should be glad about it. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise on this morning. Come on now, we can do better than that on this first Sunday of September. Because this morning the sun still shines and the sun is still yet on that cross on this morning. Amen. We want to thank you for coming out to Friendship Baptist Church on this morning, and we're going to have a blessed and glorious time on this morning. Amen. Let us say a word of prayer, and we shall go forth on this service. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Lord, you woke us up this morning with a reasonable portion of strength and health on this morning. We want to thank you for allowing our minds to wake up with you on our minds this morning. Now, Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to come down and give us the spirits of utterance and allow your praise and worship to go back up unto you on this morning. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, amen and amen. At this time, let us all please stand as we have the procession of, our, of the Lord's Supper at this time. You all may be seated. Good morning, friendship. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. How y'all doing this morning? 
My name is Deacon Richardson. I'm standing with Deacon Lyons and Deacon Ingram. We'll be your devotional team this morning. Uh, Deacon Ingram is going to come with a song, Deacon, and I will give you a uh, scripture, and Deacon Lyons will be giving you a prayer. Amen. Good morning, friends. Here. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I Please remain standing for the reading of God's word. I'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger was turned away, and thou comforted me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is my become he also is become my salvation. Therefore will I with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord and call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people, make mention of his name and exalt it. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing, the most of all is doing to the Holy Word. Y'all may be seated. It's now time for us to go to prayer. I would ask that we would all just clear our minds. Just think about who allowed us to be here this morning because we didn't have to wake up this morning and it's only through his mercy that he allowed us to be here. Heavenly Father, it's once again, Lord, we come bowed heads, Father. First of all, Father, just asking that you would forgive us for anything that we may have done, knowingly or unknowingly, that was not for you and in your right mind. Father, then we ask that you would lead us the way you would want us to go, Father. Father, we know that there are a lot of distractions out here. But Father, we ask that you would make sure that we keep our minds stayed on you. Because Father, with our minds stayed on you, nothing can stop us, Father. Whatever it might be. And Father, we know that there are people dying every second, Father. But you have allowed us to wake up this morning. Every Most of us think that it's automatic, Father. We think that we were just here because we wanted to be, Father. But it was only through your grace and mercy that we woke up one more day. 
because today was not promised. So, Father, we thank you because we know that it's only through your power that we are here, Father. So, Father, thank you. Father, there are those that are out on the byways, Father, that aren't thinking about you, Father. <laughs> but, Father, we know that we ought to be have our minds stayed on you because that's the only way we're able to make it, Father. It's all about you, Father. And we need to understand as we go through these trials and tribulations on a daily basis, Father. We have people in high places that don't understand that you're the only one that has kept us this far. This United States is here because you have allowed us to be leader, Father. Yeah. Not from anybody else, Father. Yeah. So, Father, we thank you. But we ask, Father, that you touch some of those people's heart who are leading this country, Father. Touch their heart and allow them to understand that it's only you that have allowed us to get here, Father. Only through you. Only through your power, Father. Only through your grace and mercy, Father. We thank you, Father. <laughs> we thank you. Thank you for our leader of this congregation, Pastor Trotter. Thank you, Father, for continuing to lift him up, helping us to do what you've asked us to do, Father. We thank you for that leadership. We thank you for his helpmate who has continued to stand by his side and lift him up when he might be weak, Father. Thank you for my deacon brothers who continue to stand and do your will, Father. We know we get tired, Father. We know you ask a lot of us, Father. But we know that you can give us the strength to keep us going on, Father. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for helping us to keep on keeping on, Father. Father, I know without you, Father, we would be nothing. Without your strength, without your mercy, without your grace, we would be nowhere, Father. So, Father, we just come to thank you one more time, Father. Father, when we come to the end of this journey, Father, we ask that you would receive us in your kingdom. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. We'll now turn it over in the hands of the choir. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on. The Bible says that everything that hath breath ought to praise the Lord. Come on. If you're in the house and you're breathing this morning, there ought to be a praise going on. Oh, come on. Stand to your feet and give God the praise that he's due. No matter what's going on, no matter what you came through to get here, you got here. And God is worthy. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. That we can ask for and think, and we're going to give him glory this morning. God, you're worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. He's worthy. We serve an amazing God. Come on, let's go together. In the spirit, we're going to worship him this morning in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Come on, choir. You are holy.
appreciate it. My God is good. He's good on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And you know what? He's good right now. I need everybody to put your hands together and say, God is Thank you. 
hear. Tell them what he'll do. Oh, he'll answer prayer. He'll answer prayer. If you fall down on your knees and pray about it, he'll answer prayer. He'll answer yeah. Prayer. Stay right there. I know the Lord will answer prayer. I dare somebody to wave your hand and say he'll answer prayer. Oh, 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 oh yes. He'll answer prayer. He said, if my people wish to call by my name, yes. If they'll just humble themselves, get down on your knees, get down on your knees and pray. He said, I hear from heaven. I forgive your sin and I heal the land, yeah. Won't he heal your body? Won't he save your soul? Won't he pick you up? Won't he turn you around? Won't he pay your bills? Won't he save your soul? Won't he heal your body? Pray about it, he'll answer prayer. Yes, sir, Jesus. I wish I had a witness that friendship that knows he'll answer. Yes, God will sit up in heaven and answer prayer. Yes, he will. Yeah, yeah. He'll answer prayer. Fall down on your knees and pray to the Father. to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, giving reverence to Pastor Trotter, Sister Trotter, the ministers who labor with him, friendship family, friends, and guests. My name is Reagan Brannon, and I am here on behalf of the Hospitality Ministry to welcome our guests this morning. If you are visiting with us, would you please stand and remain standing? On behalf of Pastor Trotter, we welcome you today. We realize that there are plenty of other churches that you could have worshipped with this morning. And for that, we are truly thankful that you've decided to worship with us. If there's anything that we can do to make your worship experience more spirit-filled or enjoyable, please do not hesitate to ask. Friendship family, please stand and welcome our guests. Thank you. <laughs>
friendship. Truly, we thank God for another Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Not only do I thank him for a Sunday morning, but I thank him for his grace and for his mercy. Grace and mercy that has kept all of us since we last gathered together. You do know that if it were not for the grace of God, none of us would be here today. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for grace and mercy to those of you who are our guests this morning. Welcome to Friendship. We thank God for your being here. Please come back and worship with us again. Those who are joining us by live streaming, we welcome you into this worship service as well. We want to just reiterate or we want to uh, point out just a few of our announcements. Please pay attention to all of the announcements that's in our program. Uh, but we want to remind you that on September the 25th, uh, financial peace class will begin. Yeah. If you're interested in financial peace, uh, please see Sister Fadine Hernandez following service over in the Family Life Center. Uh, you can sign up and she'll give you all the information that you need. Also, we are having our Evangelical Training Association classes, ETA classes, uh, that will begin on September the 18th uh, at 6.30 p.m. here at the church. Uh, these are classes that we've been having here for the past four years, well, past five years now. Uh, they teach us how to do certain and different things in the church. And so if you're interested, please see uh, Sister Deborah Gardner or Sister Sylvia Bethea following this morning's worship service over in the Family Life Center. They'll give you all the information that uh, you need, amen, to become a part of these programs. Also on tomorrow, because of the holiday, uh, don't forget that the church and offices will be closed on tomorrow. We'll be back to regular business on, uh, on Tuesday morning. This means no ministry meetings on tomorrow evening uh, due to the closure of our church due to the holiday. Also on the third Sunday, September the 16th, I believe it is, it's Back to Church Sunday. And we want you to invite someone to come and worship with you on that Sunday, either at 8 o'clock or 11 o'clock. I believe there is some information on the hospitality table right outside of our sanctuary. Uh, if you want to invite somebody, I believe we have something out there that you can share with them uh, to invite them back to church. If there ever was a time that we needed to get back to church, that time certainly is now. Amen. So please uh, invite somebody to come and share in worship with you on the third Sunday, amen, September the 16th. Amen. You ought to attend your church. Amen. You ought to extend your church. And you ought to defend Amen. your church. Amen. Amen. If friendship was not worth defending, I'd find another church to go to. Amen. If it was not worth, amen, me coming, amen, so that I can invite somebody else, I'd find another church. Don't y'all go nowhere. Amen. I'd find another church, amen, to go to. So on, don't forget, on the third Sunday, it's Back to Church Sunday. Amen. We're praying continually for Brother and Sister Perry Carter. Uh, their son was funeralized and laid to rest here on Friday. Sister Ursula Sparks, her grandmother, was laid to rest on yesterday. Amen. I see she's here today. And we are also praying. We're also praying for Sister Ida Floyd and Sister Wanelda Walton. Amen. Uh, also, uh, you see the announcements in the program for uh, the STEM uh, science technology program that will take place this coming Saturday. Uh, don't forget about that. Amen. Also, on the fourth Sunday, uh, somebody called Pastor Gregory C. and First Lady Doris Trotter will be celebrating six years as pastor of Friendship Baptist Church. Amen. Both of them kind of look familiar. The picture looks a little familiar to me. Amen. But we thank God for six years of ministry. Amen. Here at Friendship. Amen. And we look for just as many more. As God says, I'm not going to put a number on that. I, just as many more as God sees fit. Amen. All right. At 
this time we're going to ask our deacons to come as we continue to worship God with our giving. Here at Friendship, we believe in both tithes and offering. Tithe is what we owe God. The offering is the seed that we sow. This is that opportunity that we have set aside in service where we give back to God that which so rightfully belongs to him, remembering that attitude matters. God loveth a cheerful giver. Here at Friendship, we have several ways for you to give. Uh, we have the tithing envelope that's right there in front of you. We also have uh, online giving. We have mobile giving. We have text to give. Those of you who would like to use your cell phone, uh, there's a number on the back of your program all the way down at the bottom if you would like to text to give or there's a barcode there as well if you want to use it to give. But whatever you do, let us make sure we are giving back to God that which so rightfully belongs to him, remembering that God loveth a cheerful giver. They're going to pray, and then we'll be in the hands of our ushers. Lord, we thank you for just bringing us to this portion, Father, of our service, Lord, to give back the portion that you have given us, Father God. Lord, we'd like to bless upon those who had it to give, Lord, and that had not to give, Father God. You know their heart, and we thank you for them anyway. The Lord, bless the ones who are happy to give right now, Father. Continue to bless them and bless this offering for the uplifting and building of your kingdom. It is Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. you stand as we read the word of God. Today, in Galatians chapter number six, Galatians chapter number six, and I'll read one verse, verse number nine. there? And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 
May the Lord bless the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for grace and mercy. We thank you for brand new mercies that we awoke to this morning. We realize what we laid down last night, rising up was not promised to us. But some way, somehow, Lord, you saw fit to allow us to be here. And when we got up, Lord, we realized and recognized the fact that we hadn't earned the right. We don't deserve to be here, but it's all because of grace and mercy and for that, we say thank you, Lord. We, we don't ever want to overlook and forget the things that you do for us in our lives. So now, Lord, we just ask that you would just continue to have your way in this place. Have your way among your people. You, you know what we all stand in the need of, and we ask that you would meet them right now in the name of Jesus. Whether they are physically, whether they are emotionally, whether they are spiritually, whether they are financially, Lord, you are able to meet all of our needs. I found out a long time ago that nothing is too hard with you. Nothing is impossible with you. If I can believe it, if I can trust you for it, Lord, it's already done. So today, Master, we just ask that you would have your way. Have your way in this place among your people. Today, just allow your Holy Spirit to have free reign among us to accomplish the purpose that you have for us today. Now, Lord, we humbly submit ourselves and yield ourselves to you in the name of Jesus as we prepare to share your word. Today, I decrease that you might increase. Lord, it, it's not about me, but it's all about you. I just thank you for being an instrument that you've chosen to you. So use me for your glory this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we give glory, honor, and praise to God Almighty, who is the head of my life, to Jesus Christ, my Savior, the Holy Spirit who dwells within me. We thank God for our ministers and deacons and all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse number nine, the latter portion of it says, For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. You have a seed in the ground. That's what we're talking about today. You have a seed in the ground. Amen. The scripture just told you you have a seed in the ground because you can't reap if there's nothing in the ground. Can I get a witness? Amen. So, so I need y'all to help me this morning. For in due season, we shall reap. That means that there's a seed in the ground. Amen. Nothing comes from nothing, but, but you reap when there is something in the ground. Amen. Now, now most of the time, when, when we read or hear a lesson or a sermon from this passage of Scripture, it is done from the negative perspective. Now, while I will give an overview of the first 10 verses which include our text, for the purpose of today's sermon, our focus will be on verse number 9. The sermon today is meant to encourage us to hold on and continue to live for God because harvest time is coming. Amen. Harvest time is, is coming. Now, verses 1 through 3 tells us how to restore a fallen Christian. Amen. And it also tells us who should restore a fallen Christian. Amen. Everybody can't restore a fallen Christian. Amen. 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 Because you have to know what you are doing. Amen. 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 And it's hard to restore what's fallen when you too are fallen. Amen. Now, we, we are told that, that, that it takes a spirit of meekness to restore a fallen Christian. Too, too many of us, amen, have a spirit of arrogance, a, a spirit of holiness, a, a spirit of holier than thou. 
amen, when, when we go to somebody, amen, who has fallen. Uh, also, those who are spiritually mature should be the ones reaching out to restore the fallen Christian. And we are also told in verse 2 that we are to bear one another's burden. You see, these are, are the difficult problems that people have when, when, when the scripture says we ought to bear one another's burden. We, we ought to be willing to come under somebody, amen, to help other Christians to, to carry their heavy load. Amen. Yours might be light now, but, but keep on living. Amen. I, I, I promise you there are some loads that will show up. Amen. That will make you wonder if you'll ever be able to stand again. You see, in verse 3, we are reminded that we're not to think we're better than those who are going through something. Amen. And we have to be very, 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 very careful. Amen. That we think that somebody else is less than we are because of what they are going through. Amen. Amen. You see, that's the reason why you have to tell folk you don't know my story. Amen. You are, you are judging me, but you really don't know my story. Amen. And, and, and everything that we are going through, it's not because I've done something wrong. Sometimes it's because I've done a lot right. You see, self-deception is the worst kind of deception that one can have. Yeah, we all sometimes think we are living better, or, or, or should I say, holier than we are. That, that's why Paul, in, in verse number four, tells every Christian to examine yourself. Amen. Notice he, he said, examine yourself. You see, he didn't say examine somebody else, but, but we need to learn to examine ourselves. You see, the word prove in verse four means to examine. Amen. Now, if you're going to honestly examine yourself, you've got to be honest with yourself. You see, all of us need to examine ourselves rather than judging everybody else. Now, now verse 5 is, is not a contradiction of verse 2. You see, in verse 2, we are told that we are to help one another. We are to help bear one another's burdens. And in verse 5, Paul reminds us that we each must answer to God for ourselves. Yeah. Amen. So, so we have to understand, amen, while we uh, bear one another's burdens, we must understand that we all have to answer to God ourselves. Yeah. Then in verse 6, Paul reminds us that those who labor in the word they are worthy of their hire or they ought to be taken care of. Then in verse 7, Paul reminds us that we will, not we might, but we will reap what we sow. Paul is saying that we cannot turn up our nose at God as if nothing will happen to us when we sin. Amen, amen. Here we are reminded that we'll reap what we sow. Amen, amen. You might not get it today, but we will reap what we sow. Verse 8 continues this thought, for here Paul reminds us that, that when we sow spiritual things, we'll reap spiritual things. But, but when, we, when, we, we, when we sow fleshly things, we'll reap the troubles. We'll reap the pains of sowing fleshly things. This brings us to our text, verse number nine, which says, And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap. I like that word, shall reap, if we don't give up, if we don't quit if we don't let somebody talk us out of our blessing. 
Can I get a witness? Amen. My, my question to, to all of us this morning is, do you know that you have a seed in the ground? Do, do you know that you have a seed in, in the ground? Well, maybe my question really should be, what, what kind of seed do you have in the ground? Now, now you have a seed in the ground, but, but it's what kind of seed do you have in the ground? You see, because verse 7 and 8 tells us that all of us Amen. We, we have some kind of seed in the ground. Since all of us answered yes, that we have a seed in the ground, I need to remind every last one of us that harvest time is on the way. Amen. Harvest time is... is is on the way. But, but I want to share harvest time. I want to share it from the positive perspective. So draw your toes back. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to step on your, your toes today. Amen. I, I, I want to share this from, amen, the positive perspective. Or should I not say don't draw your toes back, but go ahead and relax your feet. Amen. Just don't take your shoes off. Amen. Amen. I want to share share this from a positive perspective. But, 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 but let, me, let me remind all of us of this one thing. Harvest time does not happen overnight. Harvest time does not happen overnight. You see, before the season of, of harvest, there are two other seasons that must take place. Amen. So harvest does not happen overnight. You see, you, first of all, there is the, the planting season. Now, now the planting season is the time when, when the seed is placed in prepared ground. And it's covered up. You see, because seed that's on top of the ground is not planted. And, and, and birds and all kinds of other things can come by and eat up the seed. So, so, so it is placed in prepared ground. You see, the planting season is the times in our lives when, when we help others. When we do the right thing, when we live right no matter what, amen, when we do those things that are praiseworthy, when we do those things that, 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 that God has called and assigned our hands to do, that's planting time. You see, every time you make a difference in somebody's life, you're planting Amen. Talking about it from the positive perspective. Every time you, you share Jesus Christ with somebody, you are planting. You see, every time we do a good deed, we, we, are, we are planting. Amen. Now, 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 I need to remind you, I need to drop this nugget on you. Amen. And this nugget is we plant every day. We, 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 we plant. Every day. Amen. Not, not just one day. Amen. Even if you stay at home and stay in the bed all day, you planting. Amen. You ain't sick and you just in the bed because you don't feel like getting up. You planting. Amen. Because there's somebody that, that, that you could be sharing Jesus Christ with. Amen. So, so, so I need to let you know that we plant every day. Amen. Our thoughts, we are planting. With our words, we are planting. So we must realize there is the, the planting season. Also, not only is there the planting season, amen, there's another season that has to take place, amen, prior to harvest, and it's called the growing season. 
Amen. There's a planting season, and then there is the growing season. I know, I, I know some of y'all, you, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about when, when I'm talking about grow, planting and growing. You've been in the city all of your life. Amen. So, so this is stuff you just heard about, but, but I need to tell you this stuff I know about firsthand. Amen. Amen. I, I, I know about it firsthand. Now, 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 the growing season, amen, it, it, it is a time of waiting, but it's also a time of work. Let me say that again. The, 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 the growing season, amen, it, it, it is a time of waiting, but, but, but it's also a time of, of work. You see, in the growing season, you work to keep out the stuff that will choke out or kill your harvest. You see, we, we, during, during, during the growing season, you, you've got to keep the grass out. Because if the grass outgrows your seed, then the grass will choke out your seed. You see, you got to keep the bugs out. There are certain things that you have to do if you want to have a, a bountiful harvest. Yeah. Amen. You, the, the, the growing season is, is, is a working season. And, and let me tell you something about the growing season. The growing season is the time that God is working on us. Amen. It's the time that God is working on us because we can't be in any kind of mindset. We, we cannot be in any kind of condition, just any kind of old condition, amen, to be able to receive the harvest that God has for us. You see, God has to get us ready for the harvest, and he gets us ready in the growing season. And this is the season that we hate most of all. Amen, because it's the time that God is tearing stuff off of us. It's the time that God is working in us and on us, trying to make us ready for what he has for us. You see, it's in the growing season that you pray for rain. It's, it's, it's in the growing season that you pray for rain, but... But can I tell you something about when you pray for rain? Hey Amen. When, when it rains, guess what? You have to deal with the mud. Y'all miss what I said. You see, it, it, when, you, when you pray for rain, you've got to also deal with the mud. You see, because the rain turns the dirt into mud. Tracks in the house. And nobody don't want mud. But guess what? In order for your harvest to grow, guess what? You've got to have some rain. But you also, when it rains, you've got to deal with the mud. Amen. Mud represents that stuff that you don't want to deal with, but you have to deal with it because rain came. You see, when, when, when God is getting ready to, to grow, to grow us, not only does he let it rain, but he also let the sun shine because that takes both rain and sun to make what you planted grow. Growing season is a time of preparation. God prepares us in the growing season so that we're ready for the harvest that he has for us. That's why in verse 9 we are told not to become weary, not to get tired, not to faint, not to give up in well-doing. The reason we are not to give up is because we have to remember that we have a seed in the ground. You see, Paul tells us not to quit, not to give up, because he knew what it meant to do right but not be appreciated for the right that you do. 
Paul knew what it meant to treat folk right, but then they'll turn around and lie on you. Paul knew what it meant, amen, to do a kind deed, and then they turn around and slap you in the face. Paul knew what it meant to treat folk like God say, treat them, and they'll turn around and treat you like the devil. But we have to understand there's purpose in the growing season. Right now, because we all have a seed in the ground, we're in the growing season. We're in the growing season. God is preparing us for the harvest that he has for us. Not only is that a planting season, not only is that a growing season, but this is the one I know you want to hear about. Uh, there's harvest time. Uh, you see, this is when we reap what we've sown. <laughs> all the right living that we've done. All the right that we've done toward others. All the encouraging words that we have spoken to others, all the encouraging we've done to make a difference in others' lives, all the difference that we've made in the lives of others. Harvest time shows up. But I need to tell you something about harvest time. We don't get all of it on this side. Can I get a witness? You see, there are some things that you and I will never experience until we step out of time over into eternity. So we can't look for God to give us everything down here because if he gave it all down here, we'd have nothing to look forward to. In harvest time, we reap what we've sown. In harvest time, we reap what we've sown. You don't plant, plant corn and go out and look for collard greens. <laughs> Can I get a witness? What you plant it, when harvest time shows up, that's what you will end up reaping. Amen. So we have to understand that in, in harvest time, you see some of the stuff that we are dealing with now, I'm talking about the negative stuff now. Amen. Some of the stuff we are dealing with now is because of what we've done back down there. And there is a scripture that said, be sure that your sin will find you out. Amen. It may have been 10 years ago. It may have been 15 years ago. But I tell you something, there's a record in heaven that time cannot erase. Can I get a witness? So we have to understand that sometimes, uh, amen, the things that we are going through, the things that we are dealing with, it is simply harvest time for something that we've done a long time ago. Not only in harvest time do we reap what we've sown, we reap more than we've sown. I thank God that we reap more than what we, we've sown. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can help you to understand it this way. Amen. If you plant one kernel of corn, you cover it up, you water it, and the sun shines. When it grows up, it starts out as a blade. If you take care of it, then it becomes a stalk. If you take care of it on that stalk, amen, you find several ears of corn. Amen. See, see you, you, you reap more than you sow. You put one kernel in the ground. And, and somebody uh, took the time to count, amen, how many kernels one kernel of corn will, will, will supply. And, and if you put one kernel of corn in the ground, somebody said that a stalk of corn can yield up to 1,600 kernels of corn. Talking about reaping more than you sow. Amen. You see, you sow one act of kindness, and, and God began to bless things all over your house. Can I get a witness? Well, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me see if I can, can, can show you another way. In the Old Testament, 
Amen. In the book of Chronicles, it tells a story of a man who, when, 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 when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant uh, from the Philistine back to Jerusalem and, and on the way, amen, they didn't understand the right way to deal with it. And so one guy died trying to put his hand on the Ark. And they put the Ark in the whole house of a man by the name of Obed Edom, talking about one act of kindness. In three months, while that ark of the covenant was there in Obed Edom's house, the scripture said that his house was blessed, his wife was blessed, his children was blessed. Not only that, but every time somebody came to visit him, because the ark of the covenant was in his house, they left blessed. I need to tell somebody uh, this morning. Amen, that you'll always reap more than you sown. I need to tell you one more thing. That is that harvest time always comes later after the time of planting. I, I know, I know when we do it today, we're looking for harvest on tomorrow, but, but it just don't grow overnight. It just don't grow Overnight, Amen. It takes a time for what you planted to grow. It's got to go in the ground. It has to die in the ground. It has to come back to life in the ground. And then somewhere along the line, you'll reap a harvest. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me show you, amen, how things come back, amen, later on in life. That story is told of a woman Amen. Who had a husband and three children, and and one day this husband died. And when he died, Amen. He left his wife without a whole lot of money, and as time went on, she ran out of money. And her and her children sat down one day to eat, Amen, the last meal that that they had in the house. The lady sat there that evening and told the children that. This is all the food that we have, and, and we don't have any more food, amen, left in the house. This, this is our last meal that we have. And, and, and so the story goes on that after they ate and went to bed, when they woke up the next morning, this mother got up. She was left with these three children and no way to feed them that morning. But when she got up out of the bed, she went in the dining room and she pulled, amen, the plates out of the cabinet. And she began to set the table. Remember the night before she told the children, we don't have any more food. So, so she began to set the table. And when the children got up, amen, she began to put the pots on the stove. Amen. Amen. The children said, Mama, I thought you said we don't have any more food. Why are you setting the table? Why are you putting the pots on the stove. Right about that time, before she can answer them, there came a knock on the door. Amen. Talking about, amen, talking about you'll always reap later. Amen. And, and, and there was a knock on the door, and she opened the door, and there was a man standing there that she had never seen before. And he asked her name, and he said to her, he said to her, he said, ma'am, uh, I heard that your husband died, and and, and when I heard that news, I remembered that he loaned me some money a long time ago. And I'm here to pay you back what your husband had loaned me. You see, I need to tell you this morning, amen, that sometimes you are not the only beneficiary to what you are planning. Sometimes it's your children that will end up being blessed because of your planting. Can I get a witness? Let me, let me, let me, let me close. Let me close. Let me close. Let me close. Let me close, let me close by telling you this. Harvest is sure. Harvest is sure. When the seed has been planted. It's right there in the scripture. 
It says, in due season, we shall. Now, 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 now I, I, I went by the schoolhouse. And when I went by the schoolhouse, I stayed there long enough to understand uh, that the word shall mean just what it says. It shall happen. You see, if you have a seed in the ground, harvest time shall come. The scriptures don't say when it's going to come. But the scriptures emphatically say it shall come. If you and I don't give up, if you and I don't get tired, if you and I don't quit, if you and I don't let folk talk us out of our blessing, if we plant harvest time shall come. May God bless you and may God keep you. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. If there be one here who's out of the ark of safety, you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. You've been hearing about him. You've been told about him. You've read about him. And you want to get to know this Jesus, the one who hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross for your sins and for mine. This is that time for you to come and say, I would love to get to know Jesus. We would love to introduce you to Jesus, the one who's able to save your soul. It does not matter where you've been. It does not matter what you've done. Your sins have already been forgiven, and he'll save you today. If you're here, will you come? If you're here, a candidate for baptism, never been baptized, and you want to be baptized, we invite you to come. Thirdly, Thirdly, if you're here without a church home and the Lord is saying to you, this is the place I want you to place your local membership, we invite you to come. While the choir sings, our deacons and ministers are standing. We invite you to come. Will there be another? See you.
Is there another this morning that's willing to give your life to Christ? We have a few guests in the house. You may be looking for a church home. I can think of no better place than Friendship Baptist Church of the Colony. All we have is right now. That's all we have. There is no tomorrow. There may, may not even be a later on this day. So before it's ever too late, we invite you to walk this out, to give your life to Christ. Thank you for joining us by live streaming for our worship service today. We are now in the process of extending an invitation in our sanctuary, but I want to also extend an invitation to you, our viewers, if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, that you might get to know him today. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. So if you are a non-believer and you would like to confess Jesus Christ, if you want to become a Christian today, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And it's just that simple. You are saved. Also, if you're interested in having us to pray for you, you can visit our website. There's a place there for you to submit a prayer request, or if you're interested in becoming a member of the Friendship Baptist Church in the colony, you can also visit our website, and there is a place there for you to make that request also. But most of all, thank you for joining us today via live streaming as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. May God bless you and keep you, and may you have a blessed week. Thank you.